welcome to Working On It. I'm Dr. A and I'm a clinical psychologist aiming to make your life just a bit more manageable. Remember the tools and the tidbits that you pick up on this channel are purely educational. They can't replace therapy, but with some practice they can help you along in your daily life. So let's get started. This video will be for people who have kids in their life, are around kids, whether it's a parent, teachers, or a caregiver. I will discuss with you what you can do to help kids self-soothe. Now this could be on the way to a tantrum or this could be in the midst of a really problematic moment, whether it's a big explosion like a tantrum or something just not really going right where they are getting agitated where there's a miscommunication, where you just feel like a timeout is appropriate, which is not a bad thing for everyone to take a timeout. It's good for the kid and it's good for the parents. So this is an effective way to give a timeout. I'm not saying this is gonna work 100% of the time, but it's an it's a movement and an effort toward it actually being effective in real time as things are happening. Because when kids are getting really agitated and upset, it's hard to know what to do, right? We don't wanna give in to it too much because it's kinda of like bad press is good press, right? When kids are acting up, sometimes it is for wanting attention, not really in a good way, right? Because we want them to get attention and love from their care caregivers um, by communicating effectively, by asking for what it is they need. So we don't really want these big tantrums to be getting them their needs met, right? So sometimes we need to get kids and they need to self-soothe in so that we can communicate in an effective way. So we have to get the agitation down, we have to self-soothe, we have to get to a place that's a little bit more calm so that we can ask them and they can communicate what it is that they're looking from us without having it be this big yelling, screaming match or a power struggle, which sometimes happens between caregivers, parents, teachers, and kids. So we want to give effective timeouts and what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this the calm corner. We're gonna give it a name, it has a name, it has a definition, and it has a purpose. What you're gonna do is give them as much control over the calm corner as possible by having them pick a corner in their room. To say, when we get into trouble, or you're getting really upset and need to calm down, or you're being not very nice or respectful and need to calm down, and we need to separate, whether it's from the parent or the teacher or whether it's from a sibling, you will need to go to your calm corner. So have them pick out what corner in their room will be their calm corner, what corner they wanna go to that is dedicated to them soothing themselves and calming down. When they pick a corner, the next thing to do is that corner needs to have supplies. So whether it's like a small desk and chair that they could sit at, whether it is a book that they can read, a coloring book, a puzzle that they can do. So you designated a place where they can go to just calm down and bring all that anxiety or anger down. And that place has something that they can do, an activity to soothe them or distract them to really have something to calm them down. So you had them pick the corner, that was their choice right? Choice is very important in this because when you tell them to go to the calm corner, that part won't be their choice. So you want everything else to be that, that their choice. And what books and coloring books and activities that they will do while they're in the calm corner will also be their choice. Set that up and make sure that they understand what it is that you expect. That when things aren't going well, or you feel like the fighting isn't really going anywhere, or everybody just needs some space, whether it's from their siblings or caregivers to calm down, the expectation is that you will say, you need to go to your calm corner now. You need to go to your calm corner, either have them go by themselves or take them and place them there and then say, I will be back in 10 or 15 minutes, whatever it is that you guys decide, and make sure that they understand that you're either setting a timer or on your phone, there's, there's a timer setting some sort of parameter to when you will be back. That way, you're not abandoning them, 
but the expectation is that they are responsible for their emotions when things are really out of control and really exploding and that they are responsible for calming themselves down. And when they do that, they can communicate more effectively. And that's when we want to give attention and praise. We don't want the tantrums to have a function. We want effective communication and calming down to get them what they want to have a function, right? So we have this calm corner. You tell them that you will be back in a certain amount of time. Look, I'm setting my timer for 10 minutes. I will be back in 10 minutes to check up on you and you leave. And if they get out of the calm corner, you walk them back and you reset the timer to 10 minutes. How many ever times you need to do that. And then when the 10 minute elapses, make sure that you do go and check in on them and say, do you feel better? Did you calm down a little bit? Are you ready to talk? And if there's any sign of calmer, <laughs> calmer presence, if there is any sign of calmer communication, more clear communication, if there's even a little bit of that, let them leave the calm corner and then, then give them that attention and conversation and ask them what they need. Okay. And obviously we want to, we're going to go from an iota of calming down to, we're going to amp that up, that expectation more and more and more to have them really effectively self-soothe and see that, you know what, when I self-soothe, when I calm down or when I take a break, I actually end up getting what I need, right? Or at least I end up being listened to. Calm corner, have them designate one, have them designate all the activities that they want to put in the calm corner, have the expectation be that you will say, go to your calm corner when things are getting out of whack, walk them there. If they get out, do it again and have them know that there's a beginning, middle and end. After 10 minutes, I come back and I check in on you and then we can sort of reconvene and see if we can work on it from there. Okay. Give it a try and check out my other videos that are specifically for kids. I have lots of good tools that I use in session with parents and with kids that you guys can practice at home. There's different language that you could use. There's different activities that you can use to help them understand their own emotions and understand how to control their emotions better and communicate that with you. So go check out my other video. There's a whole kids playlist and please subscribe if you want more videos, like this or there's plenty of videos for adults um, of all different kinds of issues so please subscribe please give it a like if you're interested until then i post videos every tuesday and friday and please come back and see me next time you got this see you next time